Welcome everyone to my AMA video, and if you didn't know, I posted on my blog that I was accepting questions for AMA. Uh, AMA stands for Ask Me Anything, so it's pretty much just like that. So basically people just commented on my blog just asking certain questions, likely about chess, but I also invited, you know, non-chess questions, and yeah, I'm going to go ahead and answer them. Now this time, there's a twist. Normally I read the questions in advance and just have time to think about them and ponder them, but as soon as I posted the blog, I did not look at these questions. I didn't look at the questions, so these are going to be my raw reactions to the questions and my genuine answers. So with that said, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next scene. All right, everyone. So this is the September AMA. And as I alluded to earlier, I have not seen these questions yet. I still have not seen these questions yet. So looks like we got 10 comments. I don't know if they're all like, you know, questions. Sometimes people just comment on AMA posts, which is totally fine. But let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look. So starting with Kawar Kawarne, something like that. Uh, Sorry that I'm botching your name, but I really appreciate the question. And your question, what is your favorite format? Blitz, Rapid, Classical, and what types of positions do you enjoy? Yeah, those are good questions. I would say my favorite format, honestly, the format I enjoy playing the most is like Blitz, specifically like 3-0 Blitz. I, I, I just enjoy it because it's, such a, it's like a nice quick game. It can get, re go, get really down to the wire as far as time pressure goes. That's probably what I would say. Uh, I do also like Rapid, and like, ultimately, while well, Classical, I believe, is the best way to like, get better and just play, obviously, the best games of chess possible, I don't know, they take long, and if you lose, it really sucks. So I would say Blitz is my favorite uh, time control. What types of positions do I enjoy? Now, that is a great question. Uh, ultimately, well, I enjoy positions where I'm better. Where We'll, we'll just go ahead and say that, but... Uh, Specifically, I don't know the best way to answer it. I just like, you know, I like positions that are equal, but it's like dynamic. Like, you know, I'm not one for like, you know, crazy attacks where like both sides, kings are open, things like that. I mean, if that's the position that presents itself, then that's fine. Now, let me just check. Yeah, you guys can see the questions. That's good. So I guess that's the best way I would answer it. I'm more of a positional player. So I like thinking about things like, you know, piece placement, pawn structure, things like that. So hopefully that answers your question. A uh, flaky name too. Thank you for the question and shout out to you from my Twitch chat. Uh, how you manage college stuffs and chess training, playing, etc. stuffs together. Now that's a great question. Obviously, I think the question that you're trying to ask is like, you know, how do I balance, you know, all that stuff like with college and playing and stuff and. Uh, to be completely honest, at this point, I'm not really studying chess really as much as I used to. Now, there was a period uh, when I was like, a, it was like early to mid 2021, where like, you know, the pandemic had kind of, you know, subsided and I started playing in more tournaments. And I was like studying like kind of crazy. I mean, like one to two hours a day, something like that. And I don't know, I think you just got to manage your time just gotta manage your time with both school and like chess and like I mean there are all kinds of time management tips you know that I could give I'm not gonna say I'm the most qualified to give those but I don't know I think what worked for me is just like making sure that I got most of my school stuff done first thing in the morning uh well okay not literally like you know when I wake up that's not what I meant but you know just like make sure you get that out of the way in the morning like I generally have like morning classes you know and then like you know I generally like, you know, if I'm, if I just have free time in the morning, I work on school first so that I can have the rest of the day to focus on whatever I want to focus on, whether it be teaching or like, you know, like teaching chess or, you know, just like study, things like that. So that is a very basic answer that I would say. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Oh boy, Scattered Wealth, thank you for the question. What are your thoughts on Hans Niemann and his cheating allegations? Now, I have a whole blog about that. Now, since I put out that blog, there have been some updates. Uh, I have a blog just titled, We Need to Talk. You know, goat thumbnail, right? So I have this blog and I put some thoughts in it. Now, there have been some developments since, however, most of these still stand true. One is that I do not believe Magnus Carlsen is like the next Bobby Fischer. Although 
it could be trending that way. You never really know. I just think Bobby Fischer was just a terrible person. That's not what I think of. Oh, sorry. That's not, that was not the first point. This was the point. Bob Carlson's not Bobby Fischer 2.0. But anyway, I don't believe that. I also saw people just kind of mentioning anecdotally that Magnus accused Hans of cheating. That's just not necessarily true. We don't know that. It's obviously implied. And I think if Magnus, you know, if there was some other reason and Magnus wanted it to be known, he would have said something. But so, you know, I'm not going to go on for 30 minutes. I obviously have my opinion, you know. Um, I watched like Gotham Chess's video. Uh, his take's all right. And he like, uh, he made some good points as to like how there's like, you know, there's Team Hans and there's Team Magnus. And I think the place to be is just in the middle Apparently, Daniel Naroditsky said, you know, just be on team. I have no idea. I'm just on team. What did I call it? I'm on team. It's all speculation. So it's possible Hans cheated. I'm definitely, I think there are some suspicions as far as that goes. Um, but it's also possible that like Magnus is just being a douche. I mean, at this point, I don't really know. I do tend to give Magnus the benefit of the doubt, but you never really know. So... That's what I would say. I'm really just like open to all possible possibilities. <laughs> yeah, that's that was a genius comment. But no, I, I think like you could really take it either way. And I would just say at this point, I'm just waiting for a statement from a uh, Magnus Carlson. And I did notice uh, that. Uh, sorry, guys, give me one second, because uh, I saw this on the St. Louis broadcast. And uh, apparently, let me see if you guys can see this. Apparently, Ari Antari, who's, like, the second best player in Norway, posted this on his Instagram story, like, a day ago. I'm assuming that was a recent photo. It could have been the past before this. I mean, I assume it had Magnus's blessing. I mean, really, who knows? I mean, my bold prediction is that we're all going to look back and we're going to feel stupid about, like, calling Magnus unprofessional or whatnot. My guess is that's going to be something completely unrelated. It could be, like... Well, for his case, I hope it's not, but it could be like a family emergency and he just can't talk about it. It could be like, you know, I don't know. Well, he did say it didn't have anything to do with the St. Louis chess club. He, he said that he hopes to be back. So I think we're all assuming that he thinks Hans cheated and maybe that's just not the case. You, you never really know. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Waco one, shout out to my dad. Uh, all right, Fisher versus Carlson. Assume it's 2022 and Fisher is alive and in his prime and has all the same training, computers, etc. that Carlson has at his fingertips. Who wins and why? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Uh, mm, yeah, what I would say... So here's what I always say when we talk about, you know, who's the best player of all time. It's generally either Magnus, Kasparov, or who else? Uh, Bobby Fisher. I mean, you could throw in, like... I don't know, you could throw in Capablanca if you want. I feel like Anand is also up there. I mean, like, Cram, who really knows? But I would say, here's the thing, because you put a very important qualifier, which is, uh, you know, Fisher is alive, obviously, and has all the same training and stuff. I, yeah, Fisher did wonders, and, like, uh, Fisher was extremely talented, and he didn't have all those resources. So I feel like if Fisher, uh, well, if Fisher was sane, you know, for one, and, like, had all these resources at his disposal, I feel like, well, okay, two things could happen. Either he would just, because uh, Fisher had a quote from very late in his life where he talked about how uh, he hated chess and how computers basically, like, not solved chess, but, like, kind of took, like, the uh, creativity out of it. He had a clip about that. So I feel like if he came into 2022 and realized, like, what chess has become he'd like leave from it completely i feel like that's possible but assuming he didn't and he just used the computer uh he just used the computer to his his advantage i feel like fisher could do wonders like if he with his creativity just his play style and if he had computers and resources i mean honestly the game would probably be a draw but you know i would like i don't know magnus is also so accurate I would still take Magnus slightly because I feel like Magnus's kind of like, you know, grinding, you know, play style would really just like, you know, play to his advantage. It might be something like, like if it's a world championship match, it might be like, 
I don't know, Fisher wins two games. Maybe they go into tie breaks and Magnus just win. I don't know. You know, I, I hate not to give like a definitive answer, but I will say, I think if Fisher had modern day resources and assuming he still liked chess, it would, uh, it would be scary. All right, great question though. All right, Spickwick, thank you for the question. Uh, could you beat your mom? Now, I hope and assume that you're talking about chess, which in chess I could beat, I could beat my mom, yeah. Why is Rar bad? I don't know. Is that a rhetorical question? I don't really have anything against the Rar movement. Uh, I don't know, I'm not the question, I'm not the person to ask. Uh, okay. Vern, nine, thanks for the question. What color are your socks? Now, the vast majority of my socks, they're either white or black. And if I had the choice, I just wear black socks. I only wear white socks if I'm like literally out of them. Uh, I also have these random like, uh, I think it's like, uh, what's the cartoon? It's like Looney Tunes, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I have those random socks. Uh, I was going to like, you know, uh, give them out for like a white elephant. That's actually why I bought them. And it turns out I just couldn't make it. And then like, you know, so I just kind of kept them. And they're different colors, like red, like brown, you know. Uh, there's like one that's Bugs Bunny that's like gray, I think. So uh, to answer your question, the majority of the, of the socks you're gonna catch me wearing are black. Uh, all right. Yawn Pawn, uh, thanks for the question. What do you enjoy most about the game of chess? It's uh, a great question. I think what I enjoy most is just like the unlimited ideas there are. This is what I'd say. I mean, opening, middle game, end game, chess is just unlimited. Uh, all right. Uh, Nozman, I don't know how you pronounce the NGO, but thank you for the question. Would you rather play several games full of blunders but still win the tournament or play lots of exciting games but eventually lose? Mm, that's a great question. It might depend like circumstantially. Like if you're talking about win the tournament and the prize fund is like $5,000, then like I'm, I'm gonna like win the freaking tournament. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I would say ultimately, Mm, I, I generally believe that, like, the most important thing to do in chess is just win. Now, obviously, you want to, like, play well. And there are instances where you, like, play terribly and then, like, you know, you get lucky on one move. Like, you don't want that to happen. But I really think that, like, uh, whichever option consists of winning, which would be this one, then I would probably say that. Uh, Though you could also make an argument for, like, playing exciting games. I don't know. I, I, th I think it's just, like, I think as long as I win, then, like, you know, it's all good. It's obviously circumstantial, but... All right. SN Chen, do you think you can hit GM? No, but thanks for the question. Uh, Fire, have you seen this puzzle before, and can you solve it first try? I have seen that puzzle. Let me just check and make sure that I know exactly what I'm doing. So... It's white to play and draw. Okay, yeah, it says it here because uh, ultimately they can just go after your pawn. So I know the first move is king g7. I know that for a fact. Uh, it's king g7. So the idea is it looks impossible to catch the h pawn. Uh, it looks impossible to catch the h pawn and queen the c pawn, but there's a key maneuver and I'm trying to make sure. I have seen this puzzle. I just need to make sure I know it. So king f6, pawn pushes, then I believe you go king e7, pawn pushes to h2, then you push the c pawn, because if they queen, you queen with check. And if they go king b7, you go king d7. And then, right, their pawn's on h2. So they make a queen, but you make a queen. All right, so it's king f6. Okay, so they scoot the king in. Okay, I forgot about that variation, but... Uh, Oh, yeah, you go king e5 here. That's very key. Because if they push, then you go king d6. They'll probably show that variation. And if they take the pawn, you just go king f4. Yep. Oh, they just have you taking the pawn. But yeah, if they had a... I guess I'll go back later. Yeah, just catch the pawn. Yeah, there we go. It's been a little while since I looked at that puzzle. Uh, yeah, you'll see it. That's good. But right, so... 
so yeah, another key variation was if they pushed the pawn to h3. Uh, I'll show it here. Yeah, so a key variation is uh, if they push the pawn to h3, you have this move king d6. And what's fascinating is that you're either queening at the same time or you're queening with check. So that's why that puzzle is key. Uh, so to answer your question, Fire, yes, I do know that puzzle. And uh, I have, uh, and I solved it, you know, first try. So, all right, well, thank you all for the great questions. I really enjoyed uh, reading them. And uh, yeah, I will see you all for the next video. So just uh, take care and have a great rest of your day.